This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about Bitcoin, one coin to rule them all. This is obviously a Tolkien quote from Lord of the Rings, and it's not me being a Bitcoin maximalist. This might actually be Elon Musk being a Bitcoin maximalist. He just tweeted this a couple hours ago, and this image is accompanied by a little poem. Frodo was the under Doge, obviously an allusion to Dogecoin. All thought he would fail, himself most of all. Now, I'm seeing a lot of people online interpreting this as somehow an endorsement of, for example, XRP, because it's it's at the top here. Of course, what it's actually showing, XRP down 6% versus, versus uh, Bitcoin. Some people are saying this is an endorsement of Dogecoin. But with Musk, like with anyone else, you have to look at really not what he says, or in addition to what he says, but what he does. And what Tesla has been doing is they've been adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet using some of their US dollars. And so what's really significant about this image is that it does show Bitcoin as the super currency. It shows Bitcoin appreciating against all other against all other cryptocurrencies. The reason these are negative is because Bitcoin's in the denominator. This really does suggest that Elon Musk of all people is moving towards uh, being a Bitcoin maximalist. I don't know how uh, how you would create a meme that is is more Bitcoin maximalist than this. Now, we have a lot of good news surrounding Bitcoin besides, obviously, the Tesla news. We just learned this morning that MasterCard is going to start letting merchants accept payments directly in cryptocurrencies, especially in Bitcoin. So this is really huge. And anyone who's still saying that the U.S. government is going to ban Bitcoin when big corporations, when billionaires when congressmen and congresswomen own Bitcoin. It's just not going to happen. In addition, we just learned as well this morning that one of America's oldest, America's actually oldest and one of, the, one of its most conservative banks and custodians, this is often a custody bank behind other plans, is planning to, uh, is planning to custody and hold digital currencies like Bitcoin. Again, a suggestion that suggests that, that that Bitcoin cannot or will not be banned by the U.S. government anytime soon. Maybe in five years from now when it hits a million dollars, that's when we start seeing, uh, seeing some problems. But we've got a very long runway here. And along that runway, we have lots of corporations that are looking to buy Bitcoin. Twitter now says they're considering adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet. Obviously, Square and MicroStrategy and Tesla have already have already done this. We're still on track to hit $100,000 in Bitcoin sometime between April and September, uh, according to Plan B. And his model also has us uh, at $288,000 by the end of 2021. I think we get to at least $200,000 by the end of this year. So everything looking extremely bullish. If you want to stay up to the, on this news and follow my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. If you want to learn more about Bitcoin going to $288,000 and Plan B's model, I put this back put this out back in July of 2020 when Bitcoin was closer to 8 or 9,000. dollars So this really seemed insane back then, not insane anymore. It's just a, a hop, a skip and a jump from $48,000 Bitcoin to $288,000 Bitcoin. Bitcoin's showing very uh, strong price action this morning, trading close to new highs here after having tested the 44000 level and found good support there. The thing is, whenever Bitcoin dips now, there are all these corporate buyers, there are all these billionaire buyers and high net worth individuals buying the dips which makes it a very fun investment because you can really buy on any dip, especially when you get a dip down to uh, the 50-day moving average. In addition, Bitcoin, as in addition to being a store of value, continues to be a really nice way of sending money around the world. People are always saying, oh, it's, the fees are too high, but here's a perfect example of it costing just $8 to send $111 million dollars uh, this required obviously no third party. This is a completely secure transaction that cannot be reversed by anyone. And so this is, people talk about the use cases of Bitcoin. Obviously the use case is a store of value, but it's also a very good payment mechanism, a way of sending money peer to peer, and you don't require anyone else's 
permission in order to do this. I came across an interesting uh, diagram yesterday, which I'll, I'll link to, talking about who is holding Bitcoin and how long they've been holding it. We've, we've been talking about HODL waves for a while, but this is a great example of people uh, holding Bitcoin in spite of huge drawdowns and huge price appreciation. So here we have 21.36 million Bitcoin addresses that have not had their Bitcoin move in a year or more. That's 61% of the addresses. Now, the important thing to realize is that this 12-month period, at least the last 12-month period, obviously some of these people have been hodling for much longer than that, but the last 12-month period included that tremendous drawdown of Bitcoin in March, uh, Black Thursday, they call it, March, I can't remember the exact date, March 2020, when Bitcoin went down 50% in one day. These are very strong hand, diamond hand hodlers, not to sell during that, and also not to sell during this huge run up. So this is really the majority of the addresses. Then you have what are called the cruisers, who have held their Bitcoin for one to 12 months. That's another 25%. And then the traders are just 13%. I love trading. I love trading momentum stocks. But if you want to make the really big money in Bitcoin, the place to be is uh, as a hodler to hold it for the long term, to never sell, and then to borrow against it if you need the money. By borrowing against it and not selling it, you can avoid capital gains taxes. So this, this shows where the ownership of Bitcoin is moving towards. It's moving towards hodlers. It's moving towards billionaires who have very long time horizons, corporations that have very long time horizons. When a corporation takes a position in a stock or in gold or in something like Bitcoin, they're not doing this as a day trade. They're not doing it because they're going to flip it when it goes 10% higher. Someone like Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy, they're going to be holding their Bitcoin for the rest of their lives. And as long as he's in control of MicroStrategy, MicroStrategy will never, will never sell. Finally, I wanted to end with a reminder of why we all need Bitcoin. And this is because of groups like the central bankers. Here is a, uh, a recent article about the ECB, uh, Panetta, ECB's Panetta, ECB obviously the European Central Bank, saying that when they roll out their digital currency, this will be a central bank digital currency. It won't just be like the digital currencies we have now, but it'll be much more programmed. And as a result, they'll be able to they'll be able to uh, apply different interest rates to different people who hold the currency. This is very much the difference between a smartphone and a regular phone. This is smart money. Unfortunately, central bankers are going to use it to penalize savers. And what this article points out, I just couldn't even believe it when I read it, is that he was saying, for example, and this is just a, a, a trial balloon, obviously, but he was saying that anyone holding more than 3,000 euros which is approximately, I want to say it's approximately $3,600 if you think in US dollars. Anyone, anyone holding 3,000 euros or more would be penalized with a negative interest rate. And Bitcoin really is the, the way of protecting your savings from something like this. 3,000 euro or $3,600 is, it's a good amount of money, but it's not a gigantic amount of money by any means, especially for people who live in in wealthier North American, uh, Asian, or European countries. And this really is a great window into the minds of central bankers and how they want to control you and how they want to control your money. And so as more and more countries uh, roll out central bank digital currencies, this, these things are still probably a few years away. I think he was saying in this article that it's another at least another four years out for the ECB to come out with their own central bank digital currency. But when this does, when this happens, you can imagine the targeting that will happen. And it may be, uh, it may happen that if you live in a certain part of the country, that you would have a different interest rate, or if you have a certain net worth, or even ultimately, if you have certain political views, you may be penalized by the central bank. They'll be able to track everything everywhere you spend your money, and they'll be able to apply individualized interest rates to each person. So some people, the favored class may have positive interest rates. People they want to penalize may have negative interest rates. This is another 
obvious use case for something like Bitcoin, which cannot be controlled, which is completely decentralized. When this happens, it'll be very interesting to see how the off-ramps and on-ramps to Bitcoin work. A lot of speculation that those off those on-ramps to Bitcoin will be uh, will be severed. Either way, Bitcoin allows you to send payment or receive payment to anyone in the world, and you don't need central bankers' permission to do this. So even if the off-ramps eventually get closed, and you have uh, if the on-ramps from fiat money into Bitcoin get closed. Uh, you will still have a really large market cap currency at that point. And uh, you'll have a lot of people who are just refuse to spend much time in the set in the central bank digital currency space. They'll hold Bitcoin, they'll spend Bitcoin. And this is really going to present a problem for central bankers. At this point, when this happens, there could uh, this could be the point when we have uh, some serious government intervention. Fortunately, at that point, I think it will be too late for governments and central banks to do anything. In the meantime, we just have a flood of good news. I can barely keep up with it every single day. There's more good news about corporations buying Bitcoin or saying that they're going to allow Bitcoin on their platforms. If you don't know much about Bitcoin and you want to learn more, you can check out my recently released book on Bitcoin. It's available in Kindle. It's available uh, in paperback. And the audiobook as well just was released a day or so ago. So if you like listening to your books on Audible, you can go to Amazon or go to Audible and download the book as well. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.